Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live from Liberty Hill, Texas, at Liberty Hill High School, where we have the first game of the season for you. Well, at least the one we're broadcasting right here on Vibe for the East View Patriots. The Patriots enter tonight at 3, 6, and 1 with a slow start in tournament play. But the real season starts tonight. They are 0-0, oh oh, looking to take on a very tough Liberty Hill squad who enters tonight's game at 12-2. The Panthers out there taking the field first. On the mound for Liberty Hill is Connor Sherburn, big number 15. We'll take you around the diamond here in just a moment. Hope you're all doing well tonight. My name is Jack Farrell. I will be joining you throughout well, the rest of this regular season through the district run through home and away games, of course, we are out here tonight. We've got another one at home tomorrow. That'll also be at 7 p.m. We're getting started a little bit late here tonight, but no matter. Now for the lineups for Liberty Hill for defense, Riley Carson is the one behind the plate over at first base is Cash Durkin, second base Trent Eller. At shortstop is Garrett Neely. Third base is Cade Neuenschwander in left field. Chase Maxwell in center field, Jack Stabenon in right field, Colby DeMars. First up is number nine, Ben Berglund for the Patriots. He will be on the mound tonight as well. Ryan Pullen on deck. Tyler Huerta, the three hitter in the hole. Pullen playing shortstop, Huerta playing center field. And we are ready to go. Let's play ball. The first pitch is ripped into left center field. High but playable. And that will be put away. One pitch, one out for Sherburn. That'll bring up the shortstop. Pulling steps into the box. First pitch. Caught the inside corner. That'll be strike one. Three pitches, three strikes for Connor Sherburn. As he's off to a hard start and he's working quickly. He'll take that one, a good take at that, a tough take. That'll be high for ball one. First ball of the game for Sherburn. It's a beautiful night out here. Sun's still up, 79 degrees in Liberty Hill. This pitch popped up on the infield over to second base. Getting under it is Trent Eller, and he will put it away for out number two. As we get into the swing of things, I'm having to remember what the uh, each number corresponds to what position for my scorebook. The things that leave your head once you've been off for a season. And here's the first pitch. That's chopped on the ground by Huerta. He goes right to the shortstop. The throw over will be in time. So an easy inning there for Connor Sherburn. No runs on no hits, and we head to the bottom half of the first inning. It will be Ben Berglund taking the mound for Eastview. We'll go ahead and take our first break. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Vipe 
Back into it for the bottom of the first. Number 12, Logan Dyer. Lefty stepping into the box. He's the DH today. On the mound is Ben Berglund. We'll take you around it in just a minute. That one's going to be low for ball one. Berglund on the mound. Joe Quintanilla going to be the one behind the plate at catcher. Patrick Ray is at first base. Ronnie Goldman at second. Here's the second pitch of the at-bat. It's going to be high for ball two, so a little struggle with some command here for Berglund to start off. Now on to shortstop is Ryan Pullen. He popped up to second base in his first time up in the top of the first inning. That one's going to be inside, but it's going to catch the inside corner on Dyer. It's one and two, or excuse me, two and one. At third base for Eastview is Jesus Santana. And that one's belted in to right field. It'll be down for a base hit. Just one, though. And we have our first base runner of the game. It's a single for Logan Dyer. Got good contact on that one. Now into the outfield for Eastview. Rendell Ellis in left field over in center field is Tyler Huerta. And in right field rounding everything out is our designated fielder, Logan Niederhauser. Now coming up is Chase Maxwell, the left fielder. He takes the first pitch, a patient approach today for the Panthers so far. One and zero. Bottom of the first, one man on first base. That's the leadoff man, Dyer. That's going to be low for ball number two. Berglund steps back to the mound. Here's the pitch. That's going to be low as well. Ball three. Liberty Hill 12 and 0, or excuse me, 12 and 2. Eastview 3-6-1, that tie coming in a tournament game against Brenham. Had a little bit of time off here for Eastview as the pitch is going to be low. That's a four-pitch walk to Maxwell. I haven't played a game since Saturday. It was a loss against the Hayes Hawks. Might be a new name for those of you uh, in the Austin area. It's Buda Hayes, formerly the Rebels. This is their first full season Changing the mascot, becoming the Hawks. But now we've got another lefty stepping into the box. Number 24, Cash Durkin, the big first baseman. His first at-bat here tonight is going to have runners in scoring position with nobody out. Logan Dyer advances to second base on the walk. Berglund looks the runner back to second. And taking the first pitch is Durkin. It's a good call, low for ball one. It's a pretty windy day out here. Flag sticking straight out, out in center, or out in right field, excuse me. Sun should be going down in the next half hour or so, as this one's chopped foul down the first baseline. Runner's got a good jump on that one, too. Lucky for Eastview, that one just, just outside. So now one and one to the three-hole hitter. Takes that one high and outside. Tried to drop it into the zone with the breaking ball. Nothing doing there. It's two and one. Eastview, just two and 12 in district play last season, so plenty of room for improvement as this one's laced into right field. And that one's going to go all the way to the wall. One run will score. Still trying to track the ball down in right field. Another will score. And that's going to be a two run double. No throw to the plate as Cash Durkin sends two home. That's two RBIs on the double. So he clears the bases, still nobody out. As Chase Maxwell scoring all the way from first base on the double. That one got all the way back to the wall and it took a little while for Niederhauser to track that thing down. So the home team strikes first in the bottom of the first. It's two to nothing. In this seven-inning game here tonight, Colby DeMars, the right fielder, steps to the plate with nobody out and a runner in scoring position. He's showing bunt. He's going to take it, and that's going to find the zone strike one. And ain't it a beauty, baseball is back. MLB fixed the lockout situation. College baseball's back in full swing, and now high school getting into the district slate. It's a beautiful thing. 
Now this is a well-placed bunt, no play over at third, so he'll just go and take the first out. And now runner on third base on the sacrifice bunt from Colby DeMars. So Durkin over to third base, brings up Cade Neuenschwander, the third baseman, number 10, right-handed hitter. He's got a chance to bring home a third run in the bottom of the first. Takes the first down low for ball one. Berglund on the pitch is going to send this one foul. Neuenschwander just a little bit out ahead of that one, sends it down the third baseline. That's strike one to him. Count goes one and one. Here's Berglund. That one was behind him, and it got a piece of the hitter. A mistake there for Ben Berglund. He sends another player to first base. That'll bring up the sixth batter of the inning for Liberty Hill, Trent Eller, the second baseman. Now runners on the corners with just one out. So a double play now in play for Eastview, but I'm sure they're more worried about the runner over there on third base. First pitch catches the outside corner, strike one to Trent Teller. Both teams looking to start their district run at 1-0. As this one's going to go high all the way to the backstop. Runner comes to the plate. The throw is not in time. So a run scores and the runner advances to second on the wild pitch. So new and Schwander. Takes second off the wild pitch after getting a hit by pitch, and now it's a one and two count to Trent Teller. Jack Stavinov, the center fielder on deck. Berglund going to try not to let him face it, and this is going to be punched up the middle right past the glove of the shortstop. Rounding and coming home is going to be Neuenschwander. It will just be a single, but the fourth run of the first inning for Liberty Hill. It's four to nothing, Panthers. Eller gets some good contact there for his first hit of the night. Jack stabbing on now to the plate. Eastview only sent three batters up to the plate in the top of the first. Now in the bottom of the first, this is the seventh hitter. Two outs. Bergman set on the mound. Here's the first pitch. Catches his own for strike one. So 0 and 1 to Stavanov. Jack. It's a good name, Jack. Do feel a little natural competition with other people named Jack. It's only it's only fair. There can only be one Jack. And I think it should be me. <laughs> now but here's Jack at the plate. Takes the first for strike one. We got a runner. Bobbled the uh, the pitch there, so the throwdown was not going to be in time. A stolen base for Trent Teller. So now one out. Runner on second. The only out coming on is sacrifice as this one's going to get away from the catcher and advancing to third base is Trent Eller. So the sacrifice now still in play for Stavanaugh. Two balls, one strike, one out. So anything into the outfield could score the runner here. Feller's getting out stealing bases. He's uh, He's got some wheels on him. This one going to miss low for ball three.
Sun casting long shadows out on the field. Outfield still very much in the sun. That one's going to catch the top of the zone for strike two. So the count goes full with one out. Stabbing on at the plate. Here's the payoff pitch. That's going to be high for ball four. So the second walk of the inning puts Stavina on board. So Colby DeMars, the four-hole hitter, the only one who has not reached safely so far in this inning, and he was, uh, he was a sacrifice. So now once again, runners at the corners with one out. We're going to have a meeting at the mound for Ben Berglund. And he's, uh, Berglund has settled in a little bit. He was struggling just throwing strikes at the beginning of the inning, but now it's just that Liberty Hill's kind of all over him. Pitches in the zone. They're finding good ones to hit. Stavanaugh with a good at-bat there. Work the full count and get on base. Now here comes Carson. He's the catcher. That one's punched into right field, running over, making the chase, and that one's going to get into the gap. Now one run scores. The other runner might have to slow down, and he will, but it's a one-run double. The runner going first to third there. Stavana safe at third base. Still just one out. So Carson Riley, kind of flipped around. <laughs> and Liberty Hill is handling business early. They are up to a five to nothing lead. And with only one out in the inning, they will send at least 10 batters to the plate barring a base running error as that one's gonna be low for ball one. Garrett Neely up to the plate. The shortstop. Dyer, who singled his first time up in the inning, is on deck. This one's punched into left field. That has some carry to it. This one has a chance, and that ball is out of here. A three-run bomb for the nine-hole hitter, Garrett Neely. And that one cleared the fence with ease. He's trotting around the bases as that puts Liberty Hill up eight to nothing. And we are still here with one out in the bottom of the first inning. So a three run shot pushes things to eight to nothing and it looks like That'll be the night for Berglund. So now, stepping to the mound. Get our roster out here. That's going to be number 20, John Doherty. Going to go ahead and take a quick break while Doherty gets warm. It's 8 to nothing. Liberty Hill still with one out in the bottom of the first. We'll be right back. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. 
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. So not the start that Eastview wanted, but it's nothing to nothing. We are back at the top of the order. Logan Dyer, this is his first at bat, will completely ignore everything else that happened. He didn't single his first time up. This is his first time up, as that ball is going to be high for ball one. So John Doherty and Herentz, empty bases. With one out as this one's popped high into the air, drifting into foul territory, but playable. This will be fair if it lands. And, ooh, making that one look a little dangerous. Jesus Santana there to clear it away for out number two. So this makes it hard to keep score. You get two, <laughs> two ABs in one inning. Now Chase Maxwell, who walked his first time up, only saw four pitches. But here's Doherty. This one's popped foul. Heads up in the stands. And is that one to land harmlessly out of play for Maxwell? That's the first time he swung the bat today in both of his at-bats. That one skips in for ball one. Here's the pitch. That one's belted into center field. Going back for it is Huerta. He settles underneath it and makes the play for out number three. That do it. Ten, ten uh, hitters, or excuse me, 11 hitters come to the plate there for Liberty Hill. They score eight runs. They got five hits in the inning, two walks. They plate eight. So it's eight to nothing as we head to the top of the second. We'll be right back. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports. It's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Question. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer. Men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question, so where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer, high school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Back into it for the top of the second inning. First pitch is going to be a strike taken by the four-hole hitter, Jesus Santana, the third baseman for Eastview. Comeback starts now. And, ooh, quickly 0-2. Patrick Ray is the first baseman on deck for Eastview. Connor Sherburn back out onto the mound. And a quick... Three up, three down inning is that's a good take there for Santana. Goes one to two. That's another good take, ball two. Just missed it away. So it's a good crowd out here in Liberty Hill. Fans packing in for some baseballs. That's going to be strike three. Got him looking. 
So the first strikeout of the game for either team goes in the top of the second inning to Connor Sherburn knocking out Jesus Santana. Got him in five pitches. Now here is a hit and a diving stop made by out in right field by Colby DeMars. Patch Greyes didn't give me a lot of time there as he jumped on the first pitch and lined it out to right field. So an L9 for Patrick Reyes, and that'll bring up Joe Quintanilla, the catcher, already two outs in the inning. Not the best way to start a comeback. There's a swing and a miss for Quintanilla. Now to the mound. Sherburn shaking off some signs. Now here's the pitch from Sherburn. It's going to be low and inside there for ball number one. Sherburn working quickly. Doesn't take a lot of time in between pitches there as that is going to be high to Joe Quintanilla. Joe, a little shorter there in the batter's box, so that'll switch up the strike zone. Sherburn have to aim it a little lower. Now two and one the count. A little too low there as that's now 3-1. Joe Quintanilla knocking on the door, being the first base runner here for Eastview. Patriots trail it 8 to nothing in the top of the second. Garrett Neely for Liberty Hill broke things open with a three-run shot. As that one's popped high on the infield, and that's the second time that they have popped up to the second baseman, Trent Eller. And that will end the top half of the inning for Eastview. They trail it eight to nothing. No runners, no hitters. As we head to the bottom of the second, six hitters, six retired, and what is so far a perfect game for Connor Sherburn. We'll be right back. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Doherty back to the mound in the bottom of the second. Faced two batters to end that first inning. Sent both of them down with a line out and, excuse me, with a, yeah, with a pop out and a fly out. Now his first pitch of the second inning is a strike. Up now is Cash Durkin. Scorebook's looking all jumbled and confused. Doherty a little high on that one, it's ball one. Liberty Hill with an opportunity to push it to double figures already in the second inning. Now this one's laced through the infield and that is a lead off single for Cash Durkin. So he's halfway to a cycle with a single and a double in the first inning. So one, one player heads to the plate, one player gets on base. And it's going to be Colby Namars who had a sack bunt in the first inning. First pitch on the way is going to be low. And good job by the catcher there to just be a backstop. And that one very close to being an out. But Cash Durkin able to get in safely with a little extra time. Good job by Quintanilla. 
And that's ball one now to DeMars. Runner on second. Is that one's going to be high? It's going to go to the backstop, but it went right back to the catcher, and he had a chance. <laughs> if that came right to him, he could have gunned it down to third, but it just went over his head, and now that's ball two. He's few pitchers here struggling with some command early. Two zero count to the right fielder. Made a nice diving stop to end the inning last time out. Is that one's going to be inside? Right at eye level for ball three in danger. Sending another player up with a four-pitch walk. Durkin with a single advanced all the way to third on issues uh, without even being without the ball even being put into play as that's going to be high and outside for ball four. Now, if it's a 10 run deficit uh, after four and a half in this game as um, as Liberty Hill is the home team. That would be a run rule by UIL standards. So we've still got a ways to go either way. We've still got plenty of baseball to be played. But now Eastview already on their third pitcher through, well, the way it scored through one inning as we have zero outs here in the top of the second or the bottom of the second. And it looks like we are going to have a pitching change. So that will be the end of the road, at least on the mound here, for John Doherty. And now coming to the plate, or coming to the mound, excuse me, is a new pitcher. It's going to be number five, Logan Niederhauser. He was out there in right field, so now he'll take the mound. See if they'll have a defensive substitution in right field. Maybe they'll put Doherty out there. Doherty doesn't look like a, uh, a right fielder, though. Now getting warm. We'll go ahead and take another quick break. We'll be right back in about 45 seconds. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Here we go, back into it. Cade Neunschwander at the plate with runners on the corners, nobody out, and he punches this one high into the air. This one's sort of in no man's land, coming on as Huerta. Runner going to tag, and oh, he's going to hold up. So we'll pop out to center field for Neunschwander's our first out of the inning as Niederhauser gets Neunschwander. How German. Now Trent Eller to the plate. Singled his last time up. Came around to score. One out. Runners on the corners as well. This one's going to miss just outside for Niederhauser. Still 8-0. This one's going to find the zone for strike one. It's 1-1. One and one. So Durkin still at third base, couldn't advance home. That's a swing and a miss for Eller. One ball, two strikes, one out. 
DeMars is on first base. Durkin is on third. Looking to get their first run across in this second inning. Here's the pitch. That is going to be strike three. Caught the inside corner of the plate. That's the first strikeout for Eastview. Both of the strikeouts in this game have been looking. So still, runners at the corners. That'll bring up Jack Stabenow, who walked, drew a full count. And got on base that way in the first inning. So he is officially 0 for 0 with a base on balls. No sacrifice opportunity here, so he'll need to put this in play. This one's lasered high in the sky. Shortstop settling under it and making the play to get out of the inning. So Liberty Hill on a single and a walk. Strands runners at the corners. And great job there by Logan Niederhauser to get out of the inning. That'll do it for the second. We head to the top of the third. Torres, Goldman, and Ellis do up for Eastview. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Back into the game after a little extended break there. Missed two pitches to Gary Torres, a ball and a strike each. Here's the DH for the Patriots. As that one's punched through the infield, and that'll break it up. That's the first base runner of the day for Eastview. It's a lead off single into right field for Gary Torres. Perfect game over with for Connor Sherburn. Not supposed to say those things, but when you're the away broadcaster, it's good to bring it up as much as possible. That way you can ensure the jinx. So one on, none out. Ronnie Goldman, the second baseman, number one. Chops at the first one, that'll be fouled back at strike one. So you've got to chip away at this bit by bit. That one's going to be high and just over the head of Ronnie Goldman. That was behind him as well. So Sherburn perhaps not as crisp coming out here to start the third inning. As he put the bunt down, and that is going to be a safe, ooh, tough call. The, uh, the umpire was behind it from our angle. It looked like Yusuf just got away with one. Torres very nearly called out. And they're going to say that Goldman got the bat back, so double whammy there for Liberty Hill. They didn't get the strike, and they didn't get the out there at first. Maybe the bunt's still in play for Goldman. He's got a two-and-one count. No bunt here, as that's going to miss inside. It was right at his eye level again. At least you've got some smaller players here. They really run the gamut of height. Can make it hard for a pitcher to deal with. So now a 3-1 count in danger of getting the first two men on here for Sherburn. And taken all the way there is Goldman. He takes strike two. Now a full count with nobody out. Now 3-2, nobody out. Here's the payoff pitch for Sherburn. 
He has been excellent here through two tonight. Pitch on the way is going to be high. No chance. Ball four puts Goleman on. Sends Torres over to second base. So first runners on. First runners in scoring position here tonight for Eastview. Going to crack a few onto the board. As the sun now officially down behind the field. The lights are on. Everyone in the shade. Sherburn steps back to the mound. He's looking at Rendell Ellis, the left fielder, the nine-hole hitter for Eastview. Now two balls, no strikes. And Eastview really going to have to take advantage of this here. This is the first time tonight that their offense has shown Signs of life, they're showing an ability to work on Sherburn here. As this one's punched into right field, that one's high. Looks playable, but very deep. And putting that away for out number one and all the way tagging to third base. Looks like both runners are going to come in, and that's a good heads-up base running play by Ronnie Goldman as the, the uh, ball was headed over to third base to try and tag out Torres. He was able to advance to second base, so... It's a fly out to right field, but it ends up being a nice little sacrifice for Randall Ellis as the lineup will turn over. Ben Berglund, the starting pitcher, now moving into more of a DH role. First pitch is a strike. So Berglund flew out to left field his first time up after giving the ball a good ride. So he is now looking at a 1-1 one, one count. He's got two runners in scoring position, both at second and third. So first real opportunity to score is Berglund. Going to take a hack at it, pops this one foul. That's going to go out of play and over the Eastview dugout. So Berglund now with a 1-2, one, one out. Sacrifice opportunity to die as Berglund gets out. He's going to stay alive here, chopping this one foul. Way to hack it off. Could move this over a little bit now that runners are in second and third base. Here's the pitch. That's going to skip low. Count goes two and two. This one's punched up the infield over the mound and into the outfield. One run will score, and wisely coming back on it is Goldman. So he advances to third, but no more. Now runners at the corners with one out as Torres comes in to score. Ben Berglund, the second hit of the game for the Patriots. Both of them coming in this inning. Torres, the first one to do it. He comes home there. Goldman reached via a walk. He's now at third base. So there went the shutout and the perfect game and the no-hitter all in one inning. As this one's punched into center field, going back on it, but settling underneath it to make the play. But now tagging up is Goldman. He will score with ease out there in center field as Jack Stavenaugh to put the play away. So that's out number two. But now it's just eight to two. So doing what you need to do, just carve away at it. You're, for the most part, you're not going to score eight runs in an inning like Liberty Hill did in the first. So you just got to carve away at it slowly. Eastview doing a good job of that as we have hit the third. Maybe say goodbye to the run rule. Tyler Huerta grounded out to shortstop. He's had an excellent season so far. He's been out in center field today. Looking to keep this rally alive with one player on first base. That's Berglund. Going for the pickoff again. Back safely is Berglund. Sherburn steps to the mound. Still waiting for the first pitch to Huerta. Where it takes the first pitch outside. A 
A 1-0 count. Yeah, Sherburn's really slowed down his uh, his motion here. Taking a lot more time in between pitches. Is that's going to miss high, but they might have a pickoff attempt to no. Not there. Durkin was just a little too far off the bag. Berglund, a little gambly <laughs> on the uh, on the leadoff. Two zero. That's going to catch the outside of the zone for strike one. Huerta, two and one. One one on the day. He's hitting above 300 right now. So here's the 2 1 pitch. That's going to miss. Ooh, that's going to catch the outside of the zone. Very good job on the frame from Carson Riley. So now a 2 2 count with two outs. Twos across the board. Two runs in the inning for Eastview. This is the sixth batter of the inning. As he swings and miss, and that will do it for inning number three. He got him there as well, so four outs in the inning. <laughs> as that will do it for Eastview, but they do get a couple of runs off a couple of hits and a walk. We head now to the bottom of the third. Due up is going to be Carson Riley. He doubled his last time up. With that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. So why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. Carson Riley up to the plate. Here's the first pitch. That one's going to miss inside for ball one. Logan Niederhauser back out onto the mound for his second inning of work. Was excellent in relief in the second inning. Second pitch. It's also going to miss for ball two. So Carson Riley, the catcher, is one for one with a double. Garrett Neely. Man who sent this ball out of here is on deck. That's going to catch the zone for strike number one. Third pitcher of the game for the Patriots is Logan Niederhauser. That one's going to miss for ball number three. So 3-1 count. Niederhauser sends the pitch. That one's popped foul, but a chance at it at first base. And that's going to be out number one, over ranging over to get that. Was well, number 12, Patrick Reyes. Just a weak, weak contact there. Just kind of blooped it over to first base for the first out. So after that first inning, not a whole lot of, of hard contact for Liberty Hill. That brings up Garrett Neely. Here really got a hold of that last pitch he saw as he takes this one inside as Niederhauser trying to work around him. Sent that one over the left field wall, 3-0-3 out on that one. He's, he pops this one up. This one in foul territory but playable and back to make the play, back to back pop outs for Patrick Reyes at first base. That one a little deeper getting into that shallow right field area, but first baseman was the one to put it away. So Niederhauser, pretty good. Go, 
Now Logan Dyer up. He's one for two. That one's going to miss outside low and away. This is Dyer's first plate appearance since hitting twice in the first inning. First time up he got the single, second time up. He popped out. Now here he is with two outs and nobody on. He's got a 2 nothing count, so a good chance for him to see a pitch to swing at as that one is going to catch the outside corner here. A lot of 2-0 counts here for Liberty Hill and not a lot of swings. Now the 2-1. Is that one in the same place? Outside corner, strike two. Count goes to 2-2 two and two with two outs. As this one is punched through the infield, just reaching out to go get that one is Logan Dyer. As they send this back into the infield, and that is a two-out single for Logan Dyer. So he is two for three on the day. Chase Maxwell up to the plate. He is 0 for 1 with a walk and a fly out. Walked his first time up, also in the first inning, flew out to center field. So he has also not hit since the first inning. First pitch, catches the outside, strike one. As Niederhauser started his day over in right field, as a designated fielder, as Berglund is the leadoff man, and he was on the mound to start this thing, but Berglund really struggled from the mound today. Throwing that one over to first base, but back safely is Dyer. Here's the pitch. That one's chopped foul. Dyer was running, but he'll have to head back to first base. Now the count goes 0-2. Good chance to blank the Panthers for the second straight inning. Not allowing a run. Now 8-2. to two. So It's getting a little chillier out here. That one is wasting a pitch. As when you go 0-2, you got a little more to work with. So we'll ball in two strikes with two outs, a man on first base. That pitch misses for ball two. 71 degrees out in Liberty Hill. This one's punched foul a little early on that one as the Panthers having to jump out of the way as that one headed straight for their dugout. The count stays at 2-2. Moon, just about full. So it's a clear sky here tonight. As this one's punched through the infield just out of the reach of the pitcher Niederhauser. And now going to third is Dyer. And advancing to second on the throw is Maxwell. So Dyer goes first to third. And Chase Maxwell with the single advances to second. So a couple of two out singles has a couple guys in scoring position here for Liberty Hill, and now coming up to the plate is going to be Cash Durkin, who had a two RBI double his first time up. He's two for two on the day with a single and a double. Another lefty here. 8-2. Looks at the first pitch high and outside for ball one. Durkin has hit in every inning here tonight. This is his third plate appearance in as many innings. Wanted, wanted to reach out for that one, but held up. Two balls, no strikes. Now with the 2-0. -oh. Niederhauser's pitch. That one's punched foul. And that will land in play, but out of the reach of the third baseman, Jesus Santana, as well as the left fielder, Rendell Ellis. But now two balls and one strike to the three-hole hitter, Cash Durkin. Yeah. 
fifth hitter of the inning for the Panthers. That one's going to be high for ball three. Danger of loading them up here after sending down the first two batters. All the production on base here for Liberty Hill has been with two outs. Is this one, ooh, he saw that all the way, but he was a little too early on it and belts it out of play. <laughs> oh, man. If Durkin just timed that one up a little bit better, he got two more runs in the game. But now count goes full. Danger of loading the bases. Runners should be going on the full count. I actually know if you're on second and third. But either way, full count, two outs. Here's Niederhauser, the payoff pitch. That's punched high and deep. Ranging back for it is the right fielder. And he makes the diving stop, lost it in the air as he came down with that for out number three. Look, ooh, got to get a, a defensive substitution, of course. Logan Niederhauser, the one who started out in right field, but it looks like now it is a... Uh, Looks like Ellis might have moved over to right field. So Rendell Ellis, the one to save a couple of runs there. As now we head to the top of the fourth as Cash Durkin gave that one a ride. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vipe Live. We'll be back in just a moment. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. So no runs come home on a couple of hits for Liberty Hill there in the Third inning. We now head top four. Jesus Santana do up and fouls the first pitch back. Santana, Reyes, and Quintanilla do up for the Patriots. Still on the mound is going to be Connor Sherburn. Eastview got to him a little bit, struggled with control there in the first or in the third inning. So he's now got a one and one count to Santana. The third inning, a couple of hits and a walk as this one is laced past the shortstop. Didn't get a good read on it. That was Neely, and that'll be a single into left field as Neely kind of jumped the wrong way. That was coming right at his head, so that's a tough play there as Santana reaches after striking out his first time up with a, with a single through the infield. Got good barrel on that as that sends Patrick Reyes up as he lined out to right field, got a good piece of piece of contact back in the second inning, but was all for naught. That one finds the zone for strike one. So one on, nobody out. That's how they started the previous inning as well. Swing and a miss, a quick 0-2 to Patrick Reyes. Two strikeouts in the game so far for Sherburn. The 0-2. Swing and a miss, a three-pitch strikeout. As that's the third of the game for Connor Sherburn. That's the first out of the inning. So now one on with one out for Joe Quintanilla. Quintanilla popped out to second base his first time up in the second inning. As 
Is that one a beautiful pitch catching the inside of the zone there for strike number one. No balls, one strike, one out. That one's going to miss down low for ball one. So after four straight strikes, finally throws a ball there. Gary Torres on deck. But, of course, the double play is a possibility here. Quintanilla, the catcher. Had a tough job having to catch three different guys already today. As Quintanilla now down in the count, one and two. That one misses high, count goes two and two. Quintanilla with a good eye here during this A-B. This one's chopped on third base. They're going to go to two. Double play is in order. Quintanilla going to try and beat it out. And no throw is made, so they'll just go ahead and get the lead runner. So now Santana will head back to the dugout. Quintanilla reaches safely on a fielder's choice. That brings up the D.H. Gary Torres. Like I did say, double play was a possibility there, but Quintanilla got on his horse there to beat it out. Liberty Hill couldn't make the throw in time. Here's Sherburn again. This one's popped foul. Everyone heads up. It'll be out of play and out of the park. So strike one to Gary Torres, who is one for one today with a single. He led off in the third inning. Fourth batter of the inning for Sherburn and Liberty Hill. That one well outside for ball one. Big lead over at first base there. Quintanilla. Be thinking about running here. They're going to try and go for the pickoff. They were thinking the same thing. Durkin couldn't get the glove on him. Still one and one. Two outs with a man on first base. Sherburn looks the runner back. Here's the one one. That's going to be outside and a little bit high for ball two. An hour gone by in this game. Top of the fourth. As that one has fouled back off the helmet of the catcher, and it's now a 2-2 count. Gary Torres down to his last strike. Still 2-8. The offenses have kind of stagnated a little bit. No one's been able to bring runners home. Is that one just a bit outside there? Tough take for Torres as the count goes full. Runner will be going with the full count with the two outs. That's Joe Quintanilla over on first base. Takes his lead. Runner goes. The ball is chopped foul just off the top of the net. There's a big hole here in the middle of the infield. Shortstop playing far over to third base. Eller over there at second base. Runner goes and checks his swing, and he's going to get him for strike three. Not sure if it was looking or if he's got him on the check, but either way, it is a strikeout for Connor Sherburn that ends the inning. Two strikeouts in that inning. One hit. That is all that Eastview was able to muster in the top of the fourth. We head now to the bottom of the fourth. It looks like it's going to be Niederhauser for one more inning. We'll be right back.
Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Colby DeMars will be up at the plate. To lead things off for Liberty Hill, it will be DeMars, Neuenschwander, and Eller. DeMars is 0 for 0 today, technically. A very statistical game for him. He has a sack bunt and a walk. So DeMars will lead off the bottom of the fourth inning for the Panthers. Looking to score their first run since the bottom of the first. As they start off swinging, and that is a blooper right to the shortstop, playing back deep. Ryan Pullen able to put it away with his feet on the grass. So we'll call that a line out for the first out of the inning. That brings up Neuenschwander. Neuenschwander, his first at bat, he was hit by a pitch. His last at bat in the second inning, he popped out to center field as the first pitch to him is going to be high for ball one. Niederhauser has been excellent in relief and pulled out of right field. As this one is punched into deep left field as this one is going to be back at the wall. That lands and is playable, but that will be a double. For Cade Neuenschwander, that's his first hit of the game as he got some excellent contact on that one. As that doesn't change how good Niederhauser's been. Been put in a really tough position here. So he's given up a few hits. He's put uh, several guys on the bases in the innings that he's pitched. It's hadn't been a, a pitch count friendly outing for him, but he's keeping guys off the plate. He's been he's been good through these two innings he's been in. So that's going to be strike one to Trent Eller. Eller now one for two with a single and a strikeout. He came around to score in the first inning. Now 0 and 1, as this one is also belted out to left field, ranging back over it and getting underneath it to put it away. A runner will tag. Throw will not be, not be in time. So plenty deep enough to advance the runner, but back to make the play in left field. So now that's two outs with a runner on third base. Neuenschwander with the double, now on third base. Here's Stabenoff, looks at the first pitch high and outside for ball one. So a ball and no strikes. The two outs in the bottom of the fourth. That one ooh, just catches the outside of the zone. Some groans from the Liberty Hill fans is that one. Just pushing the boundaries of the strike zone here tonight. Stabenau looking for his first hit of the game, and he does it over the shortstop. That'll bring home Neuenschwander on a single just over the infield. Got just enough of it. Able to bring home a runner. And finally, the first run scored for Liberty Hill since the first inning. Brings it to 9-2 to two now in favor of the Panthers. So, Stabenau there as a walk, a, a pop out, and now a single. That's his first hit of the ball game, his second time touching first base. Carson Riley, he's one for two with a double. Popped out his last time up and takes the first pitch for strike number one. 
As this one's chopped to shortstop, and they'll just go the short way to second base, and that'll do it. But one run scores on a couple of hits there for Liberty Hill. They push it back up to 9-2. to two. Eastview going to have to get some offense going as they have only got nine more outs to work with. We'll be right back for the top of the fifth inning on Vibe Live. Meet Josh. Hi, everybody. Josh is a high school basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Uh -huh. So what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Texas who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's conditioning. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play. And you can see the difference in his game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Back into it. We head to the top of the fifth. It's been a struggle here for Eastview, but if you wanna, if you want to look at it in a positive way, since the first inning, they're winning two to one. So the, uh, <laughs> you know, Liberty Hill, obviously a very good team here, but after that one rough inning, they've played a pretty close game, but not much of a consolation. But the pitching has settled down at the very least. You can take that as a positive for the Patriots. A lot of peas there. Because now, first pitch swinging is right to the first baseman, Cash Durkin, and a line out for Ronnie Goldman before I could even uh, <laughs> before I could even set him up. It'll be Goldman, Ellis, and Berglund. Wendell Ellis started out in left field. I believe he's now moved over to right. But now 9-2. to two. They've got to get cracking. As this one's going to catch the bottom of the zone there for strike one. So now Ellis to the plate with one out. And it's Sherburn out on the mound once again for his fifth inning of work. We got a pop up, heads up. That one going to be out of play as well. That'll land in safely. Out off the wall of the softball field. It's a gorgeous night for some baseball. The wind has settled down a quite a bit since the sun's gone down as this one's punched through the infield and a beautiful backhand play to make the out at first base. Flashing leather, Trent Eller for out number two. Pick that backhanded off the short hop from Ellis. Whipped it across his body over to the first baseman, Cash Durkin. And that is out number two, so a quick two up, two down for Sherburn and Liberty Hill. Now Ben Berglund, the starting pitcher, punches this one through the gap. So very aggressive here in the fifth inning, just jumping on anything that they can find. As Berglund makes a big, big turn there at first base, but he'll have to head back. So a one-out base runner, Ben Berglund. Since being pulled from the mound, he has gone two for two with a pair of singles. However, he hasn't been able to, to make it past first base. That's Ryan pulling up now. He is now 0 for 2, although he did. I guess he's uh, he's he's 0 for 1. He did have a sacrifice fly that brought home a, a runner there in the third inning. But now he is looking at strike one. Does that look like it hit him, and it got him on the arm, so he'll head to first base. Ben Berglund, as we just said, will head up to second. Now Tyler Huerta, the big bat for this Patriot team. He's 0 for 2 today with a ground out and a strikeout, looking to make something happen here And his third at bat. This might be it for Sherburn, who has been, who has been everything but perfect tonight. Struggled a little bit in the third inning, but otherwise Eastview has had a, a very hard time getting to Connor Sherburn. He has... 
four strikeouts, three of them swinging. They're trying to get at him. They just can't make contact. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Is this a meeting at the mound? If they're going to change the pitcher, the way it looks right now, they're going to keep him out there. Might want to change pitchers for Huerta, but not sure yet. They're going to. They're going to let him do it. They're going to give Sherman the ball. And tell him to get out of it. Got a lot of trust in him out on the mound tonight. Two outs, one runner in scoring position. But you got the toughest part of the order coming up for the Patriots. One hit batter on either side of the, of the dugout here tonight. As we are ready to go for Tyler Huerta. He's going to take a crack at the first one, sends this one high and deep to center field, but settling underneath it, backpedaling and making the play is Jack Stavanoff for the final out of the inning. Connor Sherburn gets out of it. So no one, nothing comes to pass on a single and a hit by pitch with two outs for Eastview. It's just a fly out to center field for the final out of the inning. We head to the bottom half of the fifth. We'll be right back. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Back into it for the bottom of the fifth. Due up for Liberty Hill. Got the bottom of the order. Carson Riley, the catcher. No, excuse me. Uh, Lee Riley made the final out of the inning last time, so it should be Garrett Neely. Yeah, that's right. Riley struck out, but wasn't sure if it was a, a check swing. But he did check and it was still in the zone, or if he didn't check it and swung through. So I'm just going to say, because to me it looked like he did not check his swing, but that brings up Garrett Neely. Oh, I don't know. I have my sides messed up. He just grounded out to shortstop. <laughs> So Neely now, looking at a one and one after these two first pitches. I uh, grounded out and they went to second for the force. That's right. So now that one's going to go high for a two and one. We've got Niederhauser out there still. Keep riding the hot hand. Gave up one run. Last inning, but otherwise he is Pretty good. So this one's popped up high into the air. This should be playable. It's into the gap, though. Maybe a tough play. But now Huerta settling underneath it. And there to put it away for out number one. So one batter and one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. That'll be Logan Dyer. Dyer's two for two. He's got a pair of singles. Lefty stepping into the box. We've got a 9-2 ball game with one out in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch of the at-bat. Checks his swing. And that'll be strike one. Meyer came around to score in the first inning. He then popped up. I forgot about that second at-bat in the first inning. As this one's laced over the infield, that is going to drop in very close. Right in no man's land. Patriot left fielder maybe could have dove for it as it is Berglund out there in left field now. So they shifted Ellis from left to right as Dyer is now three for four with three singles. In the first inning he, he singled and then his second at bat he popped up. 
the third he singled, and now in the fifth he singled. So now it's Chase Maxwell, who is one for two as that one breaking ball dips back into the zone for strike one. So Dyer on first, Maxwell. He walked his first time up, flew out, and then singled in the third inning. This one's chopped to the third base. This one's going to be fair. Long throw is in time. Good job by the Eastview third baseman, Jesus Santana, to chase that one down before it went foul and get it over to first base. So the assist there for Santana. Now that brings up Cash Durkin. He's got some Biggie Smalls for the walk-up song. you got to respect it. Song's like seven, eight years older than everybody on the field tonight. But the ground out does advance the runner. This one's popped high and out of play. This one coming into the stands. And ooh, just misses. The screams of terror. As a ball of twine and leather comes raining down. But that's strike one to Durkin. Durkin sends this one high and shallow. Once again, in no man's land, the center fielder Huerta coming on, makes the play. He drops the ball. So the run scores on the error. And Durkin reaches second base on the air. So an unearned run there going to go to Niederhauser. As Huerta, he had it all the way, and then at the last second it kind of came back on him a little bit. He wasn't able to make the play. So the run scores from second base, makes it 10 to two. That pitch is high, it's now a 2-0 count to Colby to Mars. So the Panthers into double figures. Now with a runner on second, two balls, no strikes. The four hole hitter, once again, just a little early on that when he got some excellent contact, but sends it fouling out of play. You no know, two balls and one strike to Colby DeMars, the four hole hitter. He's over two today with a walk. Actually, over one with a sack, sack bunt and a walk. This time he punches it into left field. Going back on it is Berglund. Berglund able to make the play and retire the side. So, one run scores off the one hit and the error. That sends us now to the top of the sixth. It is now 10 to two in favor of the home team, the Liberty Hill Panthers. We're gonna go ahead and take another quick 30 second break. We will be back in just a moment. Santana Reyes and Quintanilla do up for the Patriots. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. So the night has come to a close for Connor Sherburn. And Sherburn was excellent. Did give up two runs, had four strikeouts. Only gave up four hits. So four hits, four Ks, a couple of runs, and now onto the mound is number 20, Brody Blay. 
play number 20. We'll have a chance to face the four, five, and six hitters for Eastview. Eastview down to their final six outs in this one. 90 minutes gone in this game. Now up. So it looks like we have a pinch hitter. Pull out our rosters. So here's the first pitch to whoever he is. No, oh, no, excuse me. I was. <laughs> I think we're in the wrong spot in the lineup. It is Santana. I was thinking we were at the six hitter. We we're at the four or five spot. But Santana is quickly down 0 and 2. Number 10, the third baseman. And 10 is the number of runs that Liberty Hill has put on Eastview here. The Brody play. <laughs> Looking very fresh out of the pen. A three pitch swinging strikeout to Santana. That's his second K of the game. He's over two with a single, or one for three with a single, excuse me. Two Ks in a single. Patrick Reyes comes to the plate now. He's over two, a line out and a strikeout. The first baseman still looking for his first hit of the game. So no on with one out as Brody Blay threw <laughs> three pitches, all of them strikes. Here's his fourth pitch. That one just a bit high. Reyes back into the box. Takes another pitch. This one going to catch the outside of the zone for strike one. So ball and a strike. This one finds the zone on the inside. Reyes watched that one all the way in, but now he is down one and two. That one misses just high. So Patrick Reyes now 2-2 two -two in the count with none on and one out. Five outs remain for Eastview. As they've got a long way to go. This pitch, ooh, got him to chase. That one skipped in the dirt before the catcher and over to make the out at first base. They tracked that one down for Carson Riley. And two hitters faced and two strikeouts for Blay. That brings up Jose Quintanilla, who was over two with a pop out and a fielder's choice. He did reach last time he was up, but he went and got the lead runner instead. He takes the first pitch here. It's high. It's ball one. Two no. Good hitters count here for Quintanilla. As he looks at this one down the middle, strike one. Got another game for you tomorrow. Some St. Patrick's Day. 7 p.m. first pitch versus Glenn. That'll be the first home game that we've got for you. As this one is going to catch the outside of the zone for strike two. It's another good team out here in this district. One of the toughest districts uh, in the area. So here's the pitch. That one's going to miss high for ball three, so the count goes full with one out. Oh, excuse me, with two outs. So two strikeouts. Looking to make it three in a row for Brody Blay. Quintanilla swings and misses. Three swinging strikeouts for Brody Blay, and a beautiful relief appearance for him right there. So three up, three down, striking out the side as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. As we said, we will be back here, not here, but back on air tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for the first pitch. Between Glenn, after that, we will have really loading up the uh, the away games early. Three of the first four that we're going to have for you are going to be on the road. Next week, we've got on Tuesday and on Friday at Georgetown and then at Rouse. So it'll be a lot of driving out here for us. Man, I'm coming from... Basically from campus, from UT campus, oh, I cannot tell you. 
having to leave, <laughs> having to get somewhere at 5:30, like in Leander or worse, is is a tough is a tough thing to ask. I'd be sitting in a lot of traffic, but it's okay. I, I like listening to my podcast and I like listening to my songs, so I can't complain too much. But I can I can complain a little. Who likes who likes Austin traffic? Who likes I-35? Who likes 183? Certainly not me, and I'm I'm seeing a lot of them, but get to see a lot of a lot of area that you don't get to see a lot, which I do enjoy. So do up here for Liberty Hill will be Cade Newenschwander, Trent Eller, and Jack Stabin on the five, six, seven hitters as we are ready to go. And it looks like they're going to give Niederhauser the ball for three more innings or uh, for three more batters at least. Oh no, we're gonna no, yeah, we're gonna give it to him. So it's confused there. As Eastview shaking off some some rust as we get into to district play, and I'm shaking off some rust as I haven't called a baseball game since last May. But I'll be here through through the remainder of the the district slate, which I believe takes us through the end of the regular season towards the end of April. Last game for us will be Friday, April 29th. So we've got plenty of baseball ahead of us and very much looking forward to it as we've got a ball and a strike to Cade Neuenschwander. Is that breaking ball going to find the zone for strike two? Some cloud cover coming in. I'm blacking out the moon as this one's punched through the infield. And that'll be a leadoff base hit for Cade Neuenschwander. Now coming up to the plate will be Trent Eller. Trent's one for three today. Singled his first time up, since struck out and flown out. That'll be the third time that Cade Neuenschwander reaches safely. He was hit by a pitch his first time up, popped out, doubled, and now singled. But now one on with none out for Trent Eller, the second baseman. Looking for his second hit of the game. Going to take the first pitch inside for ball one. More and more teams opting for the full turf field, infield and all. Got the nice purple and gold as this one. Once again, several times here today, Liberty Hill uh, uh, hitters have have really seen the ball nicely and gotten very good contact. It's just a little bit off on the timing. They tend to be a little bit early. You get a little too antsy when you when you see a pitch you really want to hit. So we can get around on it a little too fast as this one. Didn't get enough of as it's fouled back. It's strike two. Now one ball, two strikes. So one on, nobody out in the sixth inning. Takes that outside for ball two. Good take for Eller. Stabbing on deck. Singled and brought in a run his last time up. Here's the 2-2. That one going to catch the inside corner for strike three, so another strike out here for Logan Niederhauser. I believe that is the second strikeout of the game for Eastview pitchers. The first one went to John Doherty, and this one goes to Logan First pitch to Stavanaugh, he takes for strike one. So now one on with one out. Owen one's the count. This one popped up. Heads up, everybody. This one a little more shallow. So now Owen two count for Stavanaugh. Pitchers have been aggressive on these, these pitcher-friendly counts for the most part tonight. It's a good job here for Eastview to just weather that first inning storm. Is that one well outside? We weren't even going to try him. 
since the first inning, it's, a, it's an even 2-2 game, but obviously the scoreboard not going to reflect something like that. It's 10-2. Three outs left for the Patriots in the top of the seventh inning as this one's going to skip in for ball two. Two and two. As this one's going to be well outside. The runner got too big of a lead there, but can't make him play as the pitch was so far outside. But the count goes full for Stabenow, who works it back from an 0-2. New and Schwander looking to advance over to second base. The leads he's been taking, he might be looking to run here. Little hit and run situation. Runner does go. The pitch is high, so no matter. So Stabenow draws his second walk of the game. He's now one for two. That puts New and Schwander over to second base. And that brings up Carson Riley, who was one for three, doubled in the first inning. That looks like it might do it for Logan Niederhauser who has come in in relief and pitched these last several innings very well. And that'll do it for him, and he deserves a handy round of applause from the Eastview fans. Now who's going to step to the mound? believe that's going to be Ryan Pullen. Had him over at shortstop. Now he's going to be taken over on the mound. We'll see who takes over for him at shortstop. Might be Goldman, who is over at second. Now getting some warm-up pitches in. Go ahead and just take a quick 30-second break while he warms up. We'll be right back. That'll probably be the final break of the ball game that we take. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. What is Vibe Live? Vibe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vibe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Back into it. Bottom of the six now on the field. At the mound is Ryan Pullen. Goldman staying over there at second base. Trying to get a read. Looks like they brought in Berglund to play at shortstop. So now we have Ellis back in left field. So now Carson Riley up to hit. As we said, one for three with a double in the first inning. Watches the first pitch in for strike one. Eastview trying to blank the Panthers. They've got runners on first and second base. Here's the 0-1. This one's punched softly. We have a chance at two. Bear hands it, and not in time at first base, but they get the runner at second. So headed back to the dugout is Stabenow after drawing the walk. So a fielder's choice. For the second out of the inning, advancing to third base is Cade Neuenschwander. Now coming up to the plate is Garrett Neely, who of course hit that three-run shot in the first to cap off the crazy 8 nothing start for Liberty Hill. Has since popped out and flown out. Looking to get some, some aluminum on that one. Sends it back out of play for strike one. Can't imagine that he's truly the nine-hole hitter. You've got pop like that. 
as he's quickly down 0-2. As this ECU team is really demonstrating that just the definition of, of utility as they're just pulling guys all over the place, plugging them back in when, when they need a replacement. Berglund has played three different positions tonight. They pulled a couple guys out of the field to put on the mound. That tends to be how it is in high school ball, but it's nice when you just have a bunch of arms that you can put on the mound. This one's fouled out of play, so he'll stay alive, one and two. Still 10 to two, still two outs, still a ball and two strikes. This one's punched high and deep to right field, but shallow enough that coming up under it to make the play for out number three. So that does it. A no run score on a hit and a walk for Liberty Hill in the bottom of the six. We head to the top of the seventh. Eastview down to their final three outs. Go ahead and keep it here. Coming up will be the bottom of the order for Eastview. It'll be Torres, Goldman, and Ellis, barring any pinch hit opportunities. But they'll need to get a, an absurd rally going. They'll need to match the 8-0 the eight to <laughs> the run that uh, that Liberty Hill went on there in the first inning to even tie this up to try and send it to extras. Well, you just got to take it one at bat at a time and just try and work as hard as you can at the plate. It doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily matter the result. Because if you, if you take, uh, take bad pitches, swing at good ones, you're not always going to get a hit. That's baseball. But the best thing you can do right now is just go out there and, and treat it like any other at bat. No matter the score, no matter the uh, the inning, just try and get on base, try and give your team a chance to keep the game going. Of course, Brody Blay, after that just perfect inning, three strikeouts, will get a second inning of relief. And we do indeed have our first pinch hitter of the game. Pull up my Eastview roster. I'm not sure where I left it. There it is. It'll be Andrew Godinez taking his first hacks. He takes the first one in place of Gary Torres. This one's chopped through the infield. Shortstop couldn't run it down. And a pinch hit single there for Andrew Godinez. Number 16 finds the gap, and now a chance for Ronnie Goldman. No, oh, excuse me, another pinch hit opportunity. It'll be Hector Perez. Ellis is still on deck, so no pinch hit for him. As now quickly 0-2 to Hector Perez. This one's popped straight into the air. First baseman coming up on it and underneath it. Cash Durkin makes the play for out number one on the infield pop-up. So Perez goes down. That'll bring up Randall Ellis. Ellis is 0 for 2 in this one with one runner on. Checks a swing there, but he went. Strike one. I believe that was in the zone as well. On deck is going to be Berglund. He's two for three in the game. And a swing and a miss here for Ellis. So once again, down 0-2. Back-to-back hitters. So that one's going to miss on the outside corner. As see no reason for Blade to just not be aggressive with these pitches. Ready, ready, ready. 
As that's a swing and a miss, the fourth strikeout for Brody Blay. The order will turn over for one more out. He has faced six batters. He struck out four of them. And now Ben Berglund, starting pitcher to the mound, has been playing all over the place since then, infield and outfield. Now with two on, or with one on and two outs, excuse me, it's 10 to two. Eastview down to their final out. This one's gonna be high. This one finds his own for strike number one. First swing of the at bat for Berglund. It's going to be strike two. Eastview now down to their last strike. Is Berglund going to call for time? Make sure he gets a good cut in. Now play back to the mound. That one misses high. So Berglund stays alive. The count goes two and two with two outs. Godina is still over there on first base. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. That'll be strike three. So a perfect and fitting way to end it for Brody Blay, who comes in, faces seven, and strikes out five. Liberty Hill improves to 13-2 and two on the season. A red-hot start for them. They improve to 1-0 and in district play. Eastview falls to 3-7. and seven. Now 0-1 in district play. As we said, we will be back out here tomorrow as Ben Berglund will take the loss in this one. Be on the home field. So the Patriots will get a chance against the Glen Grizzlies to protect their home field, try and avoid falling 0-2 in district play. A lot to build on here and plenty to work on as an excellent Liberty Hill team gets the best of your Patriots. That'll do it for us here. A 7 to nothing, or uh, excuse me, 8 to nothing first inning was really the, uh, <laughs> kind of ended it before it even started here. Capped off with the three-run shot. Garrett Neely sent that one well over the left field fence. The Panthers get the win on their home court. The pinstripes did their job. And that'll do it for us here. Ten to two. Seven PM, I believe, is the time for the first pitch tomorrow. We will be ready to go nice and early on the home field tomorrow. Going to make the trip up to Georgetown. We'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. I have been Jack Farrell, shaking off the rust. Looking forward to uh, doing plenty more baseball this season, calling a lot more games. Hopefully uh, a few of them a little bit better than this one after that, uh, that first inning. Eastview was really able to settle down, but uh, uh, an eight-run inning is often very difficult to overcome in the sport of baseball. So we're going to go ahead and sign off, cut the stream. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest, uh, well, a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Hope you all have a good Thursday. A good night Wednesday. Maybe go get uh, go get yourself some, some dessert after the game. Go out, get yourself a treat. It'll be nice. That'll do it for us. I'd like to thank everyone at Eastview. I'd like to thank everyone at uh, Liberty Hill for, for hosting us here tonight. I'd like to thank my boss. I'd like to thank my QA, Mr. Shane, for uh, for keeping us on the air tonight as the little ones are going to head out onto the field to run the bases. And who doesn't love running the bases? I think I think they should let the adults run the bases every now and then. But I'm going to go ahead and say goodnight. We'll see you tomorrow. 